Hi guys, Claudia Boleyn here, and today's video is about last night's Love Island, which is not a usual topic for me. I'm going to try and keep this really, really quick. Trigger warning because we're going to be discussing uh, potential coercive control and psychological abuse and domestic violence because the domestic violence umbrella, not enough people know, actually covers all kinds of abuse, whether that be physical, psychological and emotional or sexual. All of those controlling behaviours do actually fall under the DV umbrella. So that is what I'm talking about in this video. Also, just to kick off, please do not send any hate to any real people in this world, it's not helpful. Um, there's going to be a link in the description box for if you feel similarly to me, something that you can do to um, to kind of affect this issue if you have the same issue with it that I do. Don't send hate to people, that's counterproductive and it allows people who are potentially abusive to then frame themselves as the victims, which continues gaslighting. So last night's Love Island was very, very triggering for me because what I believe I witnessed was uh, psychological abuse by one cast member towards another. And the person this is targeted towards is a 19 year old called Gemma. So if you don't watch Love Island, you might wanna take a look at some of the scenes from last night and see what you think about that. Very simply put, what I witnessed last night was so disturbing because what I witnessed was gaslighting, bullying, isolation, and a sense that um, Gemma was having to question her own reality. And in some ways I am glad that this was aired, although I don't think that fulfills their duty of care whatsoever, because this is a brilliant example. We, we were watching in real time as we saw somebody who is potentially abusive or acting in an abusive manner in that moment. It could be the edit, I'll get to that later. We saw how a fact was stated, there was recorded evidence of what happened that all the islanders actually saw, and yet somehow that potentially abusive person, I'm not going to say he is an abuser because it could be the edit, but what it looked like was we had a situation where he doubled down, he gaslit Gemma to the extent that she started to question her own sanity, and several of the other islanders, notably the men, went along with it, even though we, we were in that situation where, <laughs> that, that strange and, and lucky and unlucky in different ways situation, where literally they are being filmed and the interactions are literally on camera, which they, they all watched, which was the root of this problem. So that was fascinating to watch gaslighting happen in real time. So what we saw after this had all sort of come out was we saw Gemma basically, um, she was being gaslighted and what we were witnessing is is the, the toll that psychological abuse takes on you, the toll of gaslighting. Because what we had is, we had a fact, right? We had a video of what actually happened. If you don't watch Love Island, she was accused of uh, flirting with another guy. Um, the, t the footage actually shows a guy flirting with her and her not really reciprocating that. Certainly she hasn't done anything to the level that other people on the show have. Um, it's been blown really, really out of proportion here. I don't have theories for why. But after that happened, we had a situation where this young woman, who is only 19 by the way, was actually questioning her own sanity because we had her in their equivalent of the diary room. I used to watch Big Brother. I don't know if it's called the diary room. Um, She's trying to she's trying to go through it in her head. Now we we are watching this, and I don't know if anyone else from a background of domestic violence or who studies this witnessed this and got as upset as I did. We saw her questioning her reality, even though we've all seen exactly what happened, um, and all the islanders saw it. She is having to reassure herself, saying, "I don't think I did anything wrong. The girls don't think I did. I know the boys think I did, but I didn't do anything wrong, did I? Like I'm sure I didn't do anything wrong. I I, I think." And she she's stuttering. She's trying to like she's trying to sort this out in her head like did she get it wrong like did i just remember it weirdly surely we all saw the footage like it basically makes the victim feel like they're crazy because after an event happens often where the abuser's ego has been wounded they can't accept the fact that they are the abuser and they have acted in a way that is unkind because we all do we all are at fault sometimes in our lives but what happens in abusive situations is rather than that person realizing and thinking oh I overstepped my bad, they're incapable of doing that because they have such a deep sense of, of shame and, and actually low self-esteem, which is weird because they come across as confident. They have very, very low self-esteem. So what they actually do is they have to project that onto another person. They cannot accept that they are this person that got something wrong or was unkind. So they will double down and it will, if it turns into a pattern, which obviously we don't know, we're only seeing a small portion of this on Love Island at the moment. But if it turns into a pattern, it starts to make the victim question their very sense of reality and it often Often means that the victim of abuse will over time be considered by the people around these individuals as the abuser, usually because they have become more emotional, they're having to defend themselves more. What we have with Gemma is the tables turned so that she ended up spending the episode trying to defend her mistake, 
which wasn't, um, which takes up time and it messes with her mind. So she, she's desperately trying to make him understand. And what we also witnessed, which broke my heart, is she seemed to be under the impression, as lots of people in these situations are, that the other person just doesn't understand. If you explain to the person, wait, I think you've just got this wrong. I think this is a miscommunication. Like, I, I think that's wrong. That won't work because people like that are aware of what they are doing. And I know it's horrible to think about, but um, we often give those people the benefit of the doubt, especially because people who end up with people of those personalities. And again, I'm not saying it's Luca. I'm saying that's how it's coming across in the edit. And it reflects a lot of real life relationships. It might be a terrible edit job, in which case ITV2 does have more questions to answer, not only in terms of them showing something like this on the television and, and kind of making it a sort of joke, like um, not jumping in, like, where's the pastoral care? on that show. Um, I'm sure they have a duty of care. I'm sure they do. I'll get to that in a minute. But also, if this is just something that's been done in the edit, then it's also very harmful to Luca, because if that's not how it actually went down, we are then having uh, domestic violence victims triggered and him seeming to be displaying the traits of an abuser. And if that's not the way it actually went down, then again, ITV to have questions to answer. But what you do is you start questioning your own reality. And the moment you start doing that, they've won. So I don't know if you noticed in that episode, Luca kept switching the goalposts. So every time Gemma was trying to defend herself against an allegation that, that blatantly wasn't true, it would get twisted. There, there was no way she could win. So for example, uh, when she kept defending herself, because she's quite fiery, Gemma, which is amazing for her young age, um, when she kept insisting, wait, but I, I didn't do anything with that guy. Like, I, he, 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 yeah, he liked me, but I didn't do anything with him. It then became, it's never enough. So this is why you don't, these, these people you can't reason with. Because rather than just accepting that, it suddenly changed to, well, if he fancied you, there's no smoke without fire. Obviously, he only fancied you because he thought he had a chance. Now, think about how awful that is right obviously it's really sexist but it's incredibly dangerous and that is abuser logic so what i think we witnessed in that episode was how when a person who is quite controlling or coercive or abusive um is in a situation where they're at fault they can't handle that version of themselves like they can't accept their own mistakes and their own flaws they are incapable of it so what they do is they project those things onto their victim which is obviously crazy making and it, it leads to <laughs> gaslighting and uh, codependence. It's about power and it's about shame and it's actually about the shame of the abuser because they feel inside they feel inadequate, they can't accept their own mistakes. So they have to twist things so that the abused person is the abuser and we see this time and time and time again and I wish more people understood this dynamic because if you actually research this, if you know this, if you've lived it, okay, so there's people out there who have lived this and I let's just say I have a very good understanding of this, a very good understanding of this, okay, so it's more noticeable to me and other people who've been, who've researched it or who've been in, in that situation, um, it's noticeable if you've been in it, but to other people it's very deceptive and it's very lonely because the more you are gaslit and abused, the more unstable you then seem. Often the person who is abusing you will come across as more calm or reasonable in public, with friends, um, and it makes you seem more hysterical. And you've also got the situation where um, we have something called reactive abuse, which is um, a big topic which I won't get into fully here. But the idea that someone who's abused over a long period of time might develop a reaction to the abuse. So, because whatever you do, you can't really stop it. And victims, unfortunately, do learn this because you can try, you know, there's fight, fl there's fight, flight and fawn. They're different responses you can do. So, you know, some people, you, you usually try all three. It's not that you're just one, you will try all three. So you will first try and appease and avoid situations where things go bad. So that's one. Um, you might try and distance yourself, whether that's physically or whether just in your mind, you might just try and detach. Um, but when that doesn't work either, some people's response is to react with anger because if you're being abused, you do react with anger. And then when that person reacts in response to long-term abuse, the abuser is usually very manipulative and clever with this because they've already made everyone feel like that victim is unstable over a long period of time. So that person won't have very many allies. Um, you'll also have someone that appears really calm. And I'm not saying this is not always man on woman, like it can be woman on woman. Woman, it can be woman or man, it can be non-binary, it doesn't have to be that, but in when we mix that with the actual culture we're in, and the way we associate women with being more hysterical, men with being more rational and calm, etc., it leads to really, really dangerous real-world situations, because these individuals are often very wounded themselves, and it doesn't excuse what they do, but they project their wounds onto other people because they can't handle it. They often have a lot of self-loathing, because what they're actually doing is they treat their victim the way they really feel about themselves. 
which is why sometimes they can be so incredibly vicious because that's how they feel about themselves but they are so wounded often that they can't handle that realization <laughs> like they can't deal with that they, they aim it outwards so an example of this uh, in the real world which i want to bring up is the the case of gabby petito and her tragic death which was quite recent um at the hands of her fiance brian laundry and this is an example i won't put the video in this because it's very upsetting and um, there is a police cam video where oh in case you don't know that what i don't know what happened and um, gabby petito was in her 20s young 20s and she had started a travel blog um or she wanted to start like a vlog and a travel blog um and she had gone traveling she'd renovated this van and she was really into van life she seemed like a really sunny happy lovely girl and um she went with her fiance and they wanted to do like a trip around America and they were into hiking and all that kind of thing. Um, and and then Gabby went missing. Brian Laundry came home without her in her van. There was like a search, where is Gabby Petito? And um, then it came out that um, Brian Laundry had killed her because there was domestic abuse in the relationship, which people didn't realise. Um, and there is chilling police cam footage of them pulling over Brian Laundry for a traffic violation. Well... Um, actually, it was reported to the police that he'd been slapping Gabby. Um, although even that got very confused because the police seemed confused. They seemed to think that Gabby was the instigator in that situation, which we, we know we know now that she wasn't. And it was it's awful because what you saw in that video, which is is a terrible thing to watch because of what happened to Gabby, but in terms of what it will do for victims, is, is very I hesitate to say helpful, but it is as as a learning experience because. Brian Laundry, who had just just then, you know, locked Gabby out of her own van, threatened to leave her, um, been aggressive with her, and he was controlling towards her, um, immediately acted very calm with the police, very rational. He kind of undermined it. He pretended he was really caring, like, I'm so worried about her, you know, she's a bit crazy. Gabby herself had been so conditioned by that point that she was questioning herself. She she was she was kind of stumbling, she was crying, she she was frail, she she was uh, trying to protect Brian even then. She was trying to say, well, it's not his fault, you know, sometimes I'm I'm mean, I, I, I'm OCD, and it was just tragic to watch that the last footage that we have of Gabby Petito. Um, and that situation seems to have been one of coercive control and domestic violence, not just physical, but heavy psychological violence. Um, we had a situation in that in that case where uh, we had two versions of the same story being told. Uh, the story of Gabby and Brian having an altercation and um, Gabby like uh, slapping Brian and trying to get into the van. And Brian presented it like, I just wanted her to cool down. like. I locked her out of the van because she had to calm down, like, and she needed to just chill. So that was his logic, and it came across well because he was calm, because abusers can be extremely calm when they do this, because they know they're used to doing this, they know that their victim's going to be emotional and people will dismiss them because of that. The actual story is that Gabby, it was Gabby's van, it was her home, and he was threatening to lock her out. Um, I think, I believe he tried to take her phone. He was frustrated with her because she was taking too long on her vlog in her own van. Um, and he threatened to, to leave her, basically. So it was coercive control, um, literally putting her in danger if she didn't do exactly what he wanted when he wanted. And that seems to have been a pattern in that relationship. And that is what I believe we've seen on Love Island. And I'm not, I'm not trying to say that um, that Luca in particular is necessarily an abuser or an abusive person, because it could be the edit. So if that's the case and the edit has done this, then ITV2 do have questions to answer because they are not only triggering victims of domestic violence and almost trivialising it. I couldn't believe seeing some of the after, the after show where they're kind of laughing and joking about it. Um, I was physically shaking and I actually almost burst out crying because it was so upsetting to see that happen to somebody. When you've been through it yourself and you know that, it is absolutely horrendous to watch. So um, I know Women's Aid have got in touch with Love Island before when there's been an issue like this. Um, and I think this definitely calls for that. I think that Luca certainly needs to be pulled out or the situation needs to be assessed. There needs to be some sort of statement because this is absolutely horrifying to watch. And ITV2 does have a duty of care. So I, I looked up their, their principles, their ethics, and they have a policy at ITV about uh, social purpose and how they intend to shape culture for good. And they also obviously have the Be Kind campaign, anti-bullying. So they need to not be showing domestic violence on our screens and presenting it like that's entertainment. That was absolutely horrific and I know a lot of people were triggered by that. So, 
what can you do if you also have noticed this, these controlling red flags, the kind of coercive elements, if that is worrying to you as it is to me, you can contact Ofcom. So um, I actually, <laughs> my account got like um, paused for a moment on Facebook because I was um, sending people the link to it who were also picking up on these abusive elements. Um, in the description box, you can um, you can submit a form to Ofcom um, just to let them know how you feel about this. Get in touch with Women's Aid, any other um, domestic violence charities that might be able to step in here and make some sort of statement because the most important thing here is educating people that this is not okay because I don't want anyone at home who is going through that with a partner or with a parent or with anyone else I don't want them thinking that cause that's acceptable in any way it's not banter it's not just drama that is the sort of thing that leads to real death that sort of control uh, a lot of people don't take it seriously because it's not physical violence but people need to understand that domestic violence is very complex and it's not always physical it's not always somebody being attacked or beaten sometimes domestic violence is a very psychological process um which we see in so many cases um and if you're somebody's watching this because you're, you're interested in that kind of thing or you've been through it or you you study psychology or anything like that you, you'll know what i mean but unfortunately a lot of people don't seem to understand that i've seen a lot of people noticing the red flags but that a lot of people are hesitant to actually uh classify abuse um, which is frustrating because I think more people need to understand actually what domestic abuse is and what it means, how it presents. It's not how people who haven't experienced it think it will present at all. And that is very, very hard to explain to someone who doesn't have that knowledge. It's, it's very upsetting. Okay, so if you want to fill out the Ofcom form, um, I drafted like a little paragraph. You can copy and paste that if you want. You can write your own, but please, 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 um, if you can share that, um, just that link to the Ofcom, or this video if you want, if that's helpful. Um, I, I really feel like ITB2 have a duty of care, and I think as, as, a, as, a, as a programming station, they, they, need to, they need to act on this, because people have been... It reminds me of Big Brother when Shaw Pachetti was getting um, racially abused. That was very, very difficult to watch, and it feels like that, and I don't think it's right that um, so many people who are victims or have been victims of domestic violence see that on their screens because I can tell you that was absolutely triggering and it like it was horrific and awful to watch that and have it presented as banter and just just see that presented as oh that's a bit of an argument they had I think the show even referred to it as an argument at one point and it was just very upsetting especially when you know the reality of where these things go in real life and to think that's what's happening with the cameras on um, is worrying. So it's very, very important that ITV take a stand against this. Um, I've got in touch with Women's Aid. Um, I've tried to, so hopefully they will make a statement. I honestly think Luca needs to be pulled out, or if it's not his fault and it is just a bad edit, then ITV needs to issue an apology, not only to victims, but also to Luca himself, because if that is not the case and it's just an edit, then they are associating him with psychological abuse, coercive control through their edit and that's not fair on him if that's not the case so okay thank you for watching i'm sorry this has been long um love and solidarity to you if you're someone who's been in that situation or is in that situation trust me when i tell you i completely understand um i get it 100 percent um it's really complicated and things have been so awful recently when it comes to domestic violence because you are seeing this massive surge of people who haven't experienced it who have really good intentions getting it so 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 wrong and that's very frightening for victims to see that genuinely so um i love you loads thank you for watching um i'll see you really soon bye